Hello everyone, hope all of you are safe and healthy. Welcome to IAS Baba's Rapid Revision Series for Films 2021. This is session 73 and day 101. And the topic we have is the map work and the world geography. So these are the hot topics we are going to discuss. The first two they go with the guesswork as usual. And then the third one, the South China Sea and the Nine Dashes Line. Then the West Asian map and then the Central Asia. Then the European Union and Turkey, basically the Mediterranean Sea and other areas. Then Nagorno-Karabakh and the conflict of Armenia and Azerbaijan. So in this context, we discuss the Caucasus and other areas. Then the Zamfara and the Sahel region we discuss here. And then the Horn of Africa because of the Eritrea-Ethiopia conflict. And then the Southern African region. Now coming to the first one, the MCQs. If a particular plant species is placed under the Schedule 6 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, then what is the implication? Friends, first one, a license is required to cultivate that plant. So this is moderate, we will keep it under consideration. Then, such a plant cannot be cultivated under any circumstances. So it is too extreme, we will strike it down. Then, it is a genetically modified crop plant. So once again, a moderate statement. Then, such a plant is invasive and harmful to the ecosystem. So friends here A, C, D, so three are probably formidable options but however once again UPSC is not a by heart exam. If you go through the schedules of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 then only one schedule it consists of plants that is the sixth schedule and here that schedule says that some plants they are restricted from cultivation but however they can be cultivated after license are being granted. So the first one it stands to be true and overall if you give one just read for these schedules then you will get the answer. Then come to next one. With reference to the period of Gupta dynasty in ancient India, the towns Gantasala, Kadura and Chol were well known as. Friends, option A, ports handling foreign trade, then capitals of powerful kingdoms, then places of exquisite stone art and architecture, then important Buddhist pilgrimage centers. Friends, it is purely a factual question. But however, it is not impossible to crack this if you are sincere with your NCRTs. Friends, the context in which the question was given was that is a Buddha statue was unveiled in Gantasala village. So friends, in this context it was given and it was present in the Hindu paper itself. So it was our duty to read that. And if you had read the NCRT sincerely, in the old NCRT, the word Chaul, it comes three to four times. So here the word Chaul, it is being in the context of principal ports. And then here also he built a fort at the Chaul port down the coast of Chaul. Then, once again, there was a battle in the area nearer to Chol. So, in this, we can conclude that it was a port area. So, straight away, we can hit it is a port that handled foreign trade. So, but obvious, all others, they all come in line with the Chol. So, friends, Gantasala, Kadura and Chol, they were the ports that were handling foreign trade during the Guptas. So, friends, if you have command in the basic texts and NCRTs, then you can crack most of the questions of prelims. So, never ever miss the NCRT is be it old or new. So make up your mind that at least for history and geography, you cover both old and new NCRTs because these two subjects are purely factual in nature and you have to go through the entire text if you have to gain enough knowledge regarding them. Then come to next one. What is or are the advantage of zero tillage in agriculture? Friends, if you know the concept of zero tillage, then there will be no problem at all in answering this question. So in this figure, we can see how zero tillage is done. So here the plows are not plowing the field, rather a small blade like plows, they make lines over the field and in these lines where the dip is created, the seeds are being sowed and unlike the plows, the soil will not be turned out by these zero tillage blades. So friends now coming to the options, sowing of wheat is possible without burning the residue of previous crop. Yeah friends here we are not burning and we are allowing it to decay itself. So this can be a formidable option. Then without the need for nursery of rice saplings, direct plantation of paddy seeds in the wet soil is possible. So friends, if you do the same zero tillage in a wet paddy field, then we can sow the paddies straight away into the fields. So even second can be a formidable option. Then carbon sequestration in the soil is possible. Yes friends, here we are allowing the straws to decay. So in other words, we are sequestering the carbon or we are storing that carbon which would have been emitted if we had burned these straws. So friends, all the three are correct options. And even if you have doubt in two, you can eliminate via the options. So friends, here look into the options. There is no option for one and three only. So straight away you have to hit one, two and three. That is all the three as the answer. Then come to next one. According to India's national policy on biofuels, which of the following can be used as the raw materials for production of biofuels? 
so friends here so friends here can is being present but however we cannot take it to that extremity because according to the national policy of biofuels is the constraint given so we have to go as per that friends overall if you go to the ethical reasoning regarding the national policy on biofuels then we will get to know that only those products which are in excess or only those food products which are decaying or rotten or which are damaged so those are given the first preferences for this biofuel making so we will search for those options in the first reading so cassava we don't know then damaged wheat grains yes this can be a formidable option so search for two and eliminate those options which do not contain two so here b will be eliminated then ground nut seeds so we will keep it then horse grams we will keep it for further reading then rotten potatoes yes rotten potatoes can be a formidable option so here search for all those options where five has to be there so friends except b in all the other three options the five is there and hence we did not get any luck here then come to next sugar beet friends we know that sugar cane is excessively produced in india and even today ethanol blending via sugar beet is going on and we have read in ncrts also so friends six has to be there and we will look into those options where six has to be there and by that this c gets eliminated and only two options are remaining that is a and b that is 1 2 5 and 6 and 1 2 3 4 5 6 So friends here 3 and 4 we will check it out friends we know that this 3 and 4 they are pulses and oil seeds and we are actually producing this pulses and oil seeds less in number and it is very insane to use those crops which are already less in number for ethanol blending so either we have to import and then use for ethanol blending so that is economically illogical to import something and use it for ethanol blending and if that was easy we would have imported enough amount of groundnuts and horse grams for the consumption itself so these two cannot be options here so we take a as the option that is 1 2 5 and 6 so friends by using these crude guesses we can hit and also friends for taking such guesses you need to have an idea of which crop is produced in excess in india and which crop is being imported so that is why friends make use of the class wherein we have discussed the statistics on agricultural products so go through it and use it as the guesswork and it is very insane to expect that the data will be coming verbatim or ditto in the exam hall so only 1 or 2% will be coming and we have to make the best use of it and if you don't make the use of it then we are the losers then come to next one which one of the following statements best describes the term social cost of carbon it is a measure in monetary value of the option a the long term damage done by a ton of co2 emissions in a given year so no extreme words we will keep it for further reading then requirement of biofuels for a country to provide goods and services to its citizens based on the burning of those biofuels so friends here this statement is very vague and here what type of goods and services are you providing and how much fossil fuel you are burning so it is very difficult to quantify this monetary value based on such a vague definition so this b cannot be an option at all and then efforts put in by a climate refugee to adapt to live in a new place so friends here by seeing the word climate refugee we feel that this option is very near to answer but however friends the efforts put what kind of efforts is he putting whether those efforts are eco friendly in nature so those things are not given so the efforts are only to make a livelihood and whether he will make the livelihood once again by burning the carbon or by not burning the carbon is vague here then contribution of an individual person to the carbon footprint on the planet earth so friends this is somewhat competitive to option a and now if you go through the newspapers regularly there was an article in hindu and it stated that the social cost of carbon it is 86 per ton of co2 so by very this statistics we can hit the very first option and here the knowledge itself is more a shortcut than the guessing work so friends once again upsc is telling you again and again read the daily newspapers and ncrts and basic books regularly i want only that much so this is all about today's guess works then come to next one the map work first one the south china sea and the nine dashes line so friends south china sea was in use because of the international court of arbitrations decision over that and china disobeyed that and now here we look into the map and here we have the parasail islands friends parasail islands they are being disputed with china then vietnam and taiwan 
So these three nations, they are disputing Paracel Islands, then coming to Scarborough Shoal. Friends, it is being disputed by four nations, that is Philippines, then Taiwan, then China, and then Vietnam. And then Spartley Islands, friends, this is being disputed by five nations, that is Brunei, Malaysia, then Philippines, then Taiwan, then China and Vietnam. So friends, we can get the match the following here, or we can also get the ascending and descending orders of these islands, and where this nine dashes line, it passes. So we have to be thorough with that, and then come to more about this South China Sea. Friends, here, some of the important gulfs and the straits are the Gulf of Tonkin, it is very much nearer to China and Vietnam and this we will remember. And then the Taiwan Strait we will remember and then the Luzon Strait we will remember. Friends, Luzon Strait, it comes between Taiwan and Philippines. So this we will remember here itself. Then the Sulu Sea, it is between the Malaysia and Philippines. So this Sulu Sea also we will remember here itself. And then we also remember Brunei here. Friends, Brunei is a small nation which is embedded by Malaysia and this we will remember here itself. Then other small islands like Natuna Islands, then Anambas Islands, and then Konsan Islands, we will remember here itself. So these are not in use. There are less probabilities of these coming into exam hall, but if they come, we will not lose it. So this is all about South China Sea and the nine dashes line. Then come to next one, West Asia. Friends, the Israel-Palestine conflict is going on and in that context, it becomes important. So here we can see, various nations that are involved and the first nation is Israel. We can see in the bold color here and then above that we have Syria and Lebanon. So this is Lebanon and this is Syria and here goes the Golan Heights. So Golan Heights, it lies between Syria and Israeli border and friends, we have Jordan very adjacent to Syria. So here this is Jordan, it is very much adjacent to Syria and then to the bottom of Israel, we have Gulf of Aqaba. So this Gulf of Aqaba will be remembered and then but obvious the Gulf of Suez will also be remembered and Egypt which is very much nearer to the Gaza Strip will also be remembered and then Jerusalem will be remembered here. So friends while seeing all these things the Jordan it seems to be a landlocked nation. So even that fact we will remember and then coming to more places regarding the West Asia friends here is a zoomed up picture of Israel Palestine. So friends here we can see the Gaza Strip and here we can see the West Bank. Friends, West Bank is in the eastern border of Israel. But why it is called West Bank? Because here the Jordan River flows and this West Bank, it lies to the west of the Jordan River. So that is why it is called the West Bank and this West Bank is adjacent to Dead Sea. And this Dead Sea, it lies between West Bank, then Israel and Jordan. So even that we will remember here itself. And here is the famous place, Jerusalem friends. And Jerusalem is in the border between Israel and the West Bank. And this is the hotspot of the conflict. And even here, Gaza is also a famous place. And here, Gaza is surrounded by two sides in Israel. And one side by Egypt and the other side by ocean. So if Israel starts bombarding, then Gaza people, they don't have any place to go here. So this is a brief map on Israel-Palestine conflict. Then come to next one, the West Asia. Friends here, first one, the physical map of West Asia. Friends, the beginning of West Asia comes with the Anatolian Plateau. Friends, Anatolian Plateau, it lies in Turkey. We know that. Then starts the mountain ranges and then starts the mountain ranges like a railway line. So friends, we have the Caucasus in the north and Taurus Mountains in the south. So these will run somewhat parallelly and then comes Elbrus and Zagros. So Elbrus and Zagros, they will run parallelly after Caucasus and Taurus. And friends, after that, some plateaus and deserts, they are situated and once again the mountain ranges they begin and this will be continued by the Hindu Kush and then the Tansen range. So friends, just like the railway track, the two mountain ranges are flowing. Then in between, we can see the salt desert in Iran and then Iranian plateau, we will remember and then Lut desert, we will also remember. And then coming to the ocean Persian Gulf and then Gulf of Oman, we will remember here itself. Then Rabal Kali, the greatest desert of Saudi Arabia will also be remembered. Then coming to the political map of West Asia, friends here, once again the Israel-Palestine Jordan we have discussed and very near to it, we look at Syria and the Aleppo, the famous historical city of Syria will also be remembered here. Then Damascus, the capital city of Syria will also be remembered. Then coming to Saudi Arabia and the peripheral states, Friends, to the northeast of Saudi Arabia, we have a small nation that is Kuwait. And then Qatar is also located 
to the east of Saudi Arabia and once again it is also a small nation here. And then friends, Oman is having two parts. Oman has the largest part here and then one small part of Oman is left here that is over and above the United Arab Emirates. So that we will remember here itself and then Gulf of Oman and Persian Gulf we will remember. And then Yemen will also be remembered because of the Yemen conflict that is going on recently. So this is all about the West Asia. Then come to next one Central Asia. Friends, Central Asia is in use because of the famous takeover of Afghanistan by Taliban and here we discuss some of the states of Central Asia. So friends, Central Asia it begins from the Caspian Sea and here we locate some of the neighboring states which are at the shores of Caspian Sea that is beginning from Russia and then we have Azerbaijan and then we have Iran and then we have Turkmenistan and then we have Kazakhstan. So friends this AITKR. So AITKR we will remember that abbreviation that is AITKR here and then to the west of Caspian Sea we can look at Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan and then coming to the hardcore Central Asia friends here we can look at Aral Sea. Friends, what are the nations that are bordering Aral Sea? That is the Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. So this UK or KU and Aral Sea we will remember. So friends, these are the hot spots wherein UPSC asks the question. So such things we will concentrate. And then this Kazakhstan also holds the Lake Balkash. So this is one of the important lakes, the Lake Balkash that we will remember. And then friends, we have two rivers that is Amu Darya and Sir Darya that will run through the Central Asia and they will dump their water into the Aral Sea. So they both they run from the north and south respectively and they dump their waters into the Aral Sea. So even those rivers we will remember here itself and then coming to the rivers that are dumping their water into Caspian Sea. Friends we have the Volga and Don rivers. So these flow down Russia and Don river it dumps its water into Sea of Azov that is a subsea over Black Sea and then the Volga river it dumps its water into the Caspian Sea. So this Volga and Don we will remember here itself and then we have Utal or Ural river that also dumps its water into the Caspian Sea. So these are some of the rivers that are flowing in the Central Asia and then come to other nations of Central Asia. Friends here we have Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan over and above Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. And here Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan these are the landlocked nations. So this fact we will remember here itself that is Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan the only two landlocked nations of Central Asia. Then Afghanistan also is a landlocked nation and that we know and we need not remember that separately. So these are few facts regarding Central Asia. Then come to next the physical map of Central Asia. Friends but obvious we have discussed the Elbrus and Zagros mountain ranges which are running in parallel and here we look at the state of Hermas which connects Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. So friends such facts will be the hot spot of UPSC that is the state of Hermas is going to connect the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. So we can remember this as the G H and O. The G H O is the word do not forget that and then here we have Hindu Kush mountain and somewhere next to the Hindu Kush that is to the west of Hindu Kush we have the Pamir range and then from the beginning of Kyrgyzstan the Tensen range they will start and in between this Hindu Kush and Tensen the Tibetan plateau lies. So the Tibetan plateau and the two bordering ranges that we will remember here itself and then the Iranian and the Sal desert that will be bordered by Elbrus and Zagros that also we will remember and the Syrian desert and others will be bordered by the Caucasus Mounts and the Golan Heights. So these Golan Heights we will also remember here and then the two rivers that is the Tigris and Euphrates which dump their water into the Persian Gulf will also be remembered and those two rivers they flow through the Iraq. So these two rivers that is the Tigris and Euphrates will also be remembered here. So this is a brief account on physical and geographical map of Central Asia. Then come to next European Union and Turkey basically the Mediterranean area. So friends here almost all the seas and nations of the Mediterranean Sea area will be discussed. Firstly we begin with the seas. So here we have the Bay of Biscay. Friends Bay of Biscay it lies between the France and Spain. So this fact we will remember and then the famous Strait of Gibraltar we will remember. So friends Strait of Gibraltar it is between Spain and Morocco. So this fact we will keep in mind and then come to next we have Tyrrhenian Sea. So friends Tyrrhenian Sea is between Italy and Sardinia. So Italy and Sardinia and the Tyrrhenian Sea we have to remember. Then we have Gulf of Sidra that is embedded by Libyan shores. 
so gulf of sidra and libya friends libya is famous for muammar qadhafi and his assassination in the deserts of libya then we have ionian sea that is bordering between italy and greece so italy greece and ionian sea we will remember then italy and sardinia tyrrhenian sea we will remember and then we have adriatic sea friends adriatic sea is bordered by italy on the one side and the balkan states on the other so friends here we have bosnia and herzegovina then we have macedonia then albania etc friends albania and macedonia these are the countries wherein mother teresa was born so albania and macedonia they are very much important for india also and that fact we will remember and then come to further east we have the black sea in the north and the black sea and mediterranean sea they are separated by turkey so this fact we will remember and then we have cyprus a small island nation and that cyprus also we will remember here and then coming to the nations that are surrounding the black sea that is bulgaria romania then crimea and then turkey we will remember so brct we will remember for the black sea and then we have the bosporus strait so that separates between two land masses of turkey so the bosporus strait we will also remember here and crimea which will often be in news because of the conflict going on between russia and ukraine so friends russia ukraine and crimea we will remember here itself and this sea the azov sea which is embedded by russia and ukraine we will remember here itself so this is a brief picture of political map of european union and turkey and the mediterranean sea then come to next the physical geography of the mediterranean sea friends we have discussed the tyrrhenian sea ionian sea and adriatic sea etc and now coming to mountain ranges pyrenees friends pyrenees they lie between the spain and france so this pyrenees which is in france and which are bordering spain will also be important and then we have balearic islands so friends balearic islands it is very nearer to spain and it is to the west of sardinia so that fact we will remember and then we have apennines friends apennines they flow along with italy so apennines and italy we will remember and then we have alps friends that will be bordering italy france switzerland and south of germany so alps we will remember friends alps is a famous mountain range and we have to remember that and then we have dinaric alps which is along the eastern borders of the balkan states so that we will remember and here we have the balkan mounts itself so that also is worth remembering and friends the mount olympus which is in greece is very much important in the wake of tokyo olympics so that fact we will remember then we have the rhodes islands and crete islands so these are the famous islands located in the southwest of greece so this rhodes island and crete we will remember friends we have studied in science ncerts that is rhode island is a variety of hen so that is why it becomes important so this is a brief geographical overview of mediterranean sea then come to next one nagorno karabakh conflict and the caucasus region friends what is the caucasus region it is that region between the black sea and the caspian sea so this region is called the caucasus and we will see what are the countries that are located in the caucasus region friends in the caucasus region we can locate russia and then georgia and then armenia and azerbaijan so this rga square so this we will remember and once again friends here itself the nations bordering caspian sea will also be remembered then come to more facts regarding the physiological features of the caucasus region friends the caucasus name it comes from the cis caucasia region that is to the north of the great caucasus mountain range and friends to the south of great caucasus mountain range we have lesser caucasus so this great caucasus mountain range then lesser caucasus range and then cis caucasia we will remember and friends we have kuban river that is flowing from the north to the caucasus and then we have terek river that will flow across russia and it will dump its water to the caspian sea and then we have the kuna or the aras river they also flow to the west of caucasus and dump their water to the caspian sea so this kuban river then terek river and then kura and aras river we will remember here so this is a brief account on the physiological features of caucasus then come to next one the nagorno karabakh conflict friends it is an area between armenia and azerbaijan so friends here this area of azerbaijan is being occupied by armenia so just like the pak occupied kashmir armenia has occupied some areas of azerbaijan so within that area which is being occupied lies the nagorno karabakh region so this is the nagorno karabakh region which is provided in the bold and we have to remember that this nagorno karabakh it lies between armenia and azerbaijan and it lies to the north of iran and also to the west of caspian sea so this is how the map works are being asked in upsc 
and we have to be thorough with that. Then come to next, Zamfara. Friends, Zamfara was in news because of terrorists abducting the children in that region. And this Zamfara, it basically lies in, in the country called Nigeria. Friends, Nigeria is a North African country. And in that context, we revise all the nations that are present in North area. That is basically the Sahel region. Friends, here we can see the nations of Sahel region. The nations bolded in yellow, they form the Sahel region. That is the Mauritiana, Mali, then Niger, then Nigeria then Chad, Sudan and Eritrea and once again other small nations like Senegal and Burkina Faso. Friends, these are the nations that are contributing to the Sahel region. So friends, Sahel region, it lies in the hardcore Saharan desert and friends, north of Sahel region lies the Maghreb region. So Algeria, Libya, Egypt, they come to the Maghreb region, not to the Sahel region. So this fact we will remember here itself and friends, Nigeria comes here and Zamfara comes in the north of Nigeria. And in this context, friends, the neighbors of Nigeria, that is the Cameroon in the west, then Chad in the northeast, and Niger in the north, and then Ghana in the west are to be remembered. So this is a brief account on the Sahel region and Zamfara. Then come to more facts, the Maghreb region. Friends, as we have discussed, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, they constitute the Maghreb region. So friends, the Islamic Maghreb, it was in news few years back, so in that context also we can remember. Friends, coming to the famous river that is flowing in North Africa, that is the Niger River. Friends, the Niger River, it starts from Sierra Leone and then it crosses Mali and then crosses Niger and then enters Nigeria and then dumps its water into the Atlantic Ocean. So this Niger River, it is providing waters for four to five nations and that is why it is worth remembering. And this is one of the important rivers after Nile and Congo rivers in Africa. So this is all about the North African region. Then come to next, the Horn of Africa. Friends, the Horn of Africa is the easternmost part of Africa. And here, some of the nations are Somalia, then a small nation called Djibouti, and then another nation to the north lies the Eritrea. And friends, embedded by all these nations, we have Ethiopia here. Friends, Ethiopia is a landlocked nation, and that fact we will remember. And then to the south of Ethiopia, we have the Kenya and to the west of Kenya, we have Uganda. Friends, Uganda is also a landlocked nation and that fact we will remember. And then friends, we have South Sudan here, which is the newest nation that has been created and South Sudan is also a landlocked nation. So that fact also we will remember. But however, North Sudan is not a landlocked nation and it also has one of the important ports that is the Port Sudan itself. So these are some of the facts regarding the Horn of Africa. And we have discussed some of the physiological features while discussing the river Nile and the rift valley of Africa. So this is all about Arna of Africa. Then come to next, the southern Africa. Friends, in the southern Africa, various mountain ranges, deserts and plateaus, they lie. So here, to the southeast border of Africa, we have the Drakensberg Range. And this Drakensberg Range, it begins from the bottommost point of South Africa and then it extends till the Swaziland. And once again, it extends over and above the Swazi land till the Kruger National Park. Friends, the Kruger National Park, which is famous for lions, that is the African lions, it lies nearer to this Drakensberg range. And then we have Namib Desert in the other side of the borders of African continent. So friends, these Namib Deserts, they are bordering the western borders of South Africa. And this Drakensberg range, they are bordering the eastern borders of South Africa. And then in the middle of these two, we have the Kalahari Desert. So this Kalahari Desert is worth remembering. And then coming to important cities, friends, we have Buffalo City here and then the Nelson Mandela Bay and the Port Elizabeth is also worth remembering here. And then the Cape Agulas and the Cape Town or the Cape of Good Hope are worth remembering. And then coming to some of the important rivers that are flowing in South African region, friends, Orange River, it flows westwards and dumps its water to the Atlantic Ocean. So this Orange River and Atlantic Ocean is worth remembering here. And then the Limpopo River, it flows eastwards and dumps its water to the Indian Ocean. So this Limpopo River and Indian Ocean is also worth remembering. And then the Lundi and Sabe River, they also flow eastwards and they dump their waters to the Indian Ocean. And then we have the Zambezi River, it also dumps its water to the Indian Ocean. So this Zambezi River is also worth remembering. So friends, Zambezi is one of the longest rivers in South Africa. And then we also have the Okavango River. Friends, this Okavango River, it also dumps its water to the Atlantic Ocean, just like the River Orange. And then to the north of this Okavango River, we have the Congo River. So Congo, Okavango and Orange. So these dump their waters 
to the Atlantic Ocean and Zambezi, Save and Limpopo, they dump their waters to the Indian Ocean. So these are some of the physiological features of South Africa. Then come to next one, the political maps. Friends, Dar es Salaam is one of the important city of Tanzania. So that is worth remembering. And the country Zimbabwe is also worth remembering because its currency went bankrupt few years ago and it is using several nations currency including Indian rupees. Then we have the Maputo Bay and Maputo Place of South Africa and then we have Kinshasa which hosts many of the important mines and then we have the Pretoria and the Johannesburg also which are also important mining places. So these are some of the important mining areas of South African region. Then come to more number of cities. Friends, we can locate the Johannesburg here that is to the north of South Africa and then very nearer to Swaziland. And friends, we can also locate Durban, one of the international places of South Africa. And then we can also locate the Kruger National Park and the Milvane Wildlife Sanctuary here. So friends, these are some of the important places and the physiological features of Africa, Europe, Asia and tomorrow we take up South America, America and Arctic and Antarctic regions. Now come to the last part. Friends, before science, before mathematics, before social science, before society, one basic concept that arose in universe is the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. Friends, if you follow those basic principles, then you will exceed in life. So unless and until you struggle for existence, then you will not succeed. And unless and until you are fit for the struggle, you will never succeed. So be fit both physically, mentally, emotionally and also struggle every day in your life. Mind you friends, the very lesson we learn from the nature is that starting from the birth to till the end, we have to struggle for mere existence. Be it as the fetus and be it as infants, be it as the child, be it as adolescents, be it as adults and be it as the old age persons. So everywhere there are threats and it is our duty to struggle. So struggle is the law of nature and this is a sine qua non for everybody's existence, not only for the success. So do it. All the very best. Good luck friends.